Parks love breaking records. It sounds good in a commercial. Ride the world's tallest, fastest, longest, steepest coaster. That'll get people to come to the park, not just locally, but sometimes worldwide. Parks also don't love spending tons of money, so they like to stretch their claims. The tallest dive coaster in California. The tallest, longest, fastest single rail coaster, topping the last one by an inch and a half. But my all-time favorite has to be Orion. In Kings Island, you know I love you, but calling it the longest steel coaster in the park is kind of weak. Let's talk about real records, the ones that really matter. We'll rank them by how old they are, and I'll tell you how lucky they are to be broken and what could do the job. These are the world's greatest roller coaster records. I wanted to break these up by wooden steel, but I think we may have seen the end of the wooden record breakers. The funny thing is, Son of Beast was so much bigger and faster than anything we've seen in the last 22 years. It's the only one to ever clear 200 feet, and it's got the speed record by about 6.5 miles an hour. This was a disaster of a coaster. I'm sure RCCA didn't help with their shoddy work, but nobody has tried to pass that 200 foot mark with a wood track. It looked like RMC might do it, and some of their hybrid coasters are over 200 feet tall. Don't mistake that 200 foot structure for a wooden coaster though. That track is fully steel. I'm talking about the Topper Track Wooden Coasters, popular between 2013 and 2016. These dominate the current wooden coaster records, and that's the case even after Lightning Rod was given the steel track makeover. This was the world's fastest wooden coaster, but before the 2021 season, well over half its wooden track was taken out, so this is just the boring 73 mile an hour steel coaster, going from the number one wood to the number 69 steel. The current record holder for the world's fastest wood is the coaster that Lightning Rod beat out, Goliath at Six Flags Great America. At 72 miles per hour, it's a whole half a mile an hour faster than another RMC masterpiece. Wildfire at Kilmarden. When Goliath was built, it broke El Toro's speed record of 70 miles per hour, a record it fell into after Son of Beast closed in 2009. El Toro is an Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster, another model capable of breaking records. When you look at the world's tallest wooden coaster, you'll find another Intamin at the top, T-Express at Everland. This actually shares the record with Wildfire, standing 183.8 feet. Kind of a random number to match exactly, but that's where it stands. That being said, neither one of these coasters has the biggest drop. For that, we go back to Goliath. This dives underground, so even though it's only 165 feet tall, its first drop is 180 feet. This was 4 feet better than El Toro's record when it opened in 2014. That drop is a beast, and it's also the steepest drop on a wooden coaster at 85 degrees. This broke the 1 year old record from another awesome RMC, Outlaw Run. That was a measly 81 degrees. I gotta say, officially, the record for the world's steepest coaster belongs to Switchback at ZDTs. If you know this coaster, you know why it shouldn't really count. This has an 87 degree spike, and the train kind of climbs up that before it falls backwards. I'm sorry Switchback, you don't get this one from me. When it comes to inversions, Outlaw Run shares this record with Wildfire. They have not one, not two, but three. When Outlaw Run opened with three, there wasn't even a coaster currently operating with one. Son of Beast was already torn down, but the loop is long gone before the coaster. That was torn out after the 2006 season. There are 8 wooden coasters that have inversions, 3 from RMC that go upside down either 2 or 3 times, and 5 others that only flip you over once. All of these are from the Gravity Group. Finally, you have Length, and this one isn't owned by RMC, or Intamin, or the Gravity Group. It's owned by The Beast. Kings Island built this coaster themselves 43 years ago, and nothing else has even come close since. The only other wooden coaster to even reach the 7,000 foot mark was Son of Beast. The Voyage is the only wooden coaster in the 6,000 foot range, and that's third. It's rare to see a record like this stand for 43 years, so it makes you wonder, whose record did it break? It took some extensive research, and by that I mean a few seconds, but the answer is Big Dipper at Fairmont Park. This was located in Sugar Creek, Missouri, a little bit east of Kansas City. This coaster is listed with over a mile of track, 5,372 feet, and RCDB has an opening in 1923. They called it the longest and most sensational ride in the world. I have no photos of this ride, and that's a shame. This is long gone, having burned down in 1932. It's crazy that Kings Island smashed this record so hard in 1979, and it's not surprising that nobody else has wanted to pass it ever since. Here are all the wooden coaster records laid out in one list, and honestly, I would be surprised to see any of this change from now on. The only thing I can see happen is one or more of these RMCs get converted to a steel coaster, and maybe one of these intimates get their records back. I don't see any new RMC topper tracks being built. We've seen RMC go with the ground up iBox coaster recently, and I have to imagine that's the future. As for the Intamin Prefab, we haven't seen a new one of those in 14 years. They're expensive, and I don't even know if they sell them anymore. We got four of these between 2001 and 2008, and I would really be surprised to see another one. Without the RMC Topper Track or the Intamin Prefab, the only remote possibility of a record-breaking wooden coaster lies with the Gravity Group. 
They've gone as high as 159 feet and as fast as 67 miles an hour with the Voyage, but I'd be surprised to see them pass that. So let's get into the steel coasters. The newest major record is the Max Angle, dating back to 2019 with TMNT Shellraiser. At 121.5 degrees, it broke an 8-year-old record held by Takabisha. This is basically the same ride as Takabisha, just with a drop 0.5 degrees better. So the question is, will this record be broken? Absolutely. There are six records on my list and this is the most likely one to be broken. It's too easy. You don't even have to spend a lot of money to do it. Gerslauer owns this record and they have for a long time now. They could do it with one of their cheap small Eurofighters. SNS also loves their Beyond Vertical Drops. Their L Loco model has gone way beyond 100 degrees in the past. They might take a crack at it. How about Vacoma? They're bringing back their tilt coaster, and maybe they try to tilt that really far back. Let's be honest, if these manufacturers go too far beyond vertical, they just end up with a saxophone element. These are SNS coasters, and they've been around for 17 years now. These are quite literally the world's steepest drop. You can't get steeper than these. It's a 180 degree drop, but I guess this doesn't count because it's not really a drop, so whatever. The next youngest record is the biggest drop off a lift hill. This dates back to 2015, held by Carowind's Fury 325 at 320 feet. Fury broke a 15-year-old record held by Steel Dragon 2000. There had been two gigas built since 2000, but neither of them could top that max drop of 306.8 feet. Fury smashed that, and that record has stood for seven years. That's kind of funny because this record was falling every other year, dating back to the 70s all the way until 2000. In the first eight months of 2000 alone, this record fell three times. Fury, I'm sorry, but your record won't be around much longer. If the Giga and Nasbury farm gets built, that's going to be 27 feet taller than Fury. If it doesn't get built, I think one of RMC's single rail coasters will top the mark, and that could happen within five years. Intamin, Mock Rides, Vacoma, they have an outside shot at doing it, but I would bet on B&M or RMC. Next up is the record for the most inversions on a coaster. This one goes back to 2013 and it's owned by the Smiler. 14 inversions smashed the 11-year-old record of 10 inversions, set by Colossus at Thorpe Park back in 2002. That was matched by a bunch of other intimates since then. But Smiler is a Gerslauer Infinity coaster, and if this record is broken again, I would bet on Gerslauer doing it. So, will it be broken? I say absolutely yes. Again, here's a record you can break without breaking your bank. The Smiler cost 18 million pounds. Today, that's a little over 23 million US dollars. I'm sure a lot of that went into its theming. This has less than 4,000 feet of track. It's not even 100 feet tall. It does all this with two lift hills. I can see a major park looking to build another major record breaker. Yes, I'm talking about you, Cedar Point. And they would love to claim the world's first 15 inversion coaster. Aside from a major wooden coaster, or a 500-foot RMC T-Rex, breaking the inversion record seems to be a logical next step for Cedar Point. If not them, maybe Energylandia. If they do it, they make it into Min or Vacoma to do the job. Going through the years, the next record is the world's fastest coaster. This goes back to 2010, Ferrari World's Formula Rosa. Here's another record that kept falling every other year, but Australia's Tower of Terror and Magic Mountain Superman broke the 100 mile an hour mark back in 1997. That was broken again in 2001, 2003, 2005, and that record from King to Ka stood for five years. Then, Intamin outdid themselves once again. Formula Rosa isn't only the world's fastest coaster, it shattered King to Ka's record by over 21 miles per hour. Intamin seems to have put this out of reach, and the lack of any contenders over the last 12 years supports that theory. Intamin achieved this speed by using the hydraulic launch, something they seem to have retired. In fact, this was her last one. Intamin has joined the rest of the world in using the LSM launch. I don't know if these are powerful enough to get up to that speed, unless the launch track is enormous. The one manufacturer that still employs a powerful method is SNS, using the compressed air launch. I think it's possible for this to get the train up to 150. It just makes me wonder, who would dare buy one? That seems like you're begging for maintenance problems. Because of that, I don't think this gets broken anytime soon. If and when it does, it may be with a model we can't even imagine today. We have two more records, and the runner-up for the oldest major record is the world's tallest coaster. This goes back to 2005, held by King to Ka. This broke the two-year-old record held by Top Thrill Dragster, and it blew past it by 36 feet. For a pair of rides that are near clones, this is a pretty big difference. It's hard to believe this is a 17-year-old record, and when Intamin broke the speed record, they didn't match the height. So, will we see a coaster over 456 feet anytime soon? I bet it happens in the near future. We talked about the 500-foot single rail coaster. That would do it. Another option is the polar coaster. This idea has been kicked around forever. It's even been planned and canceled. I still think it's possible, especially as a standalone coaster outside a real park. It seems like a Vegas thing or something you'll find in Orlando. The max drop on this would probably be around 50 feet. But since we're just talking about height, this would qualify. I think within 10 years, we'll see something top King to Ka. The oldest major record is for the world's longest coaster. Going all the way back to the year 2000, with 8,133 feet, we have Steel Dragon 2000. This is the only coaster ever to sniff the 8,000 foot mark. 
The next closest being the previous record holder, the Ultimate at Lightwater Valley. At 7,442 feet, this is the only steel coaster in the 7,000 foot range. Will we ever see another coaster that clears 8,000 feet and dethrones Steel Dragon 2000? Well, here's the funny thing. It's already happened. It's happened 10 other times. The longest coaster in the world actually stands at over 17,000 feet. The thing is, these are all mountain coasters. These have long lip hills and wind down the side of a mountain. The real record holder is called Turbo Trunk, going up over 5,577 feet, a little over a mile, and then going down 11,811 feet, a little over two miles. This coaster's in Andorra, located right between Spain and France. And frankly, this thing sounds awesome. I'd love to ride a coaster that covers over three miles. In the end, these don't seem to count, and Steel Dragon is still considered the champ. Will anything break this record? I can't see it. Well, I can see it, but only with one coaster. A coaster that can make this whole list obsolete. Of course, I'm talking about Falcon's Flight. This is a coaster at Six Flags Kadia in Saudi Arabia, and it's supposed to go 155 miles an hour, have a max drop of 525 feet, and cover 2.5 miles, or about 13,000 feet. That would smash every major record, except inversions and drop angle. This concept was ridiculous to start with, and even though they seem to have a plan in place, I don't know what this coaster is going to end up looking like. It most likely will be big, but a major record smasher? I'll have to see it to believe it. Aside from this, I can't imagine a park paying for a coaster that long. They'd probably see more value in two coasters at 4,000 feet each. That's still a lot of track. That's a wrap on this video. As you can see, the oldest steel record is only 22 years old, while the oldest wood record is nearly double that at 43 years old. Let me know what you think about my theories, if you think I'm right or wrong about the wooden coaster records no longer being broken, as well as your thoughts on the steel coaster records, sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, give me a sub for more content just like this. Also, check out the links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you're also a baseball fanatic like me. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.